When learning neonatal resuscitation, there are the essentials and advanced, but here we're going beyond advanced. Tell me if you've ever heard this story before. Once upon a time, the neonatologist went to his call room to lay down and get some sleep. Once he fell asleep, the critical care doctor snuck into the room to discover if the neonatologist was a true intensivist. The critical care doctor placed a tiny pea under his bed to see if the neonatologist would notice. Would the pea keep the neo up at night? The pea I'm talking about is PEA, pulseless electrical activity. And maybe it should keep you up at night because if missed, it can be devastating for the baby. What is PEA? It is when you have electrical activity in the heart that generates a heart rate tracing on the ECG monitor. It even gives you a heart rate number. But that electrical heart activity doesn't actually generate a heartbeat that pumps blood, which is felt as a pulse. If there is no pulse, there will be no pulse ox waveform or saturation reading. No pulse, no heart sounds will be heard on auscultation. No pulse, there will be no waveform on arterial monitoring if you are lucky enough to have that when it happens. No pulse means no heartbeat that is actually circulating the blood around the body. So on closer inspection, that number associated with the ECG tracing is actually zero no matter what it says on the monitor. Maybe you've never seen it or think it can't happen to a neonate. Well, there are published case reports of PA occurring even in the delivery room. I've personally witnessed it both in the delivery room and in the NICU. It can happen. So what do we do for PEA? For that information, you have to go to Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS algorithms. What does PALS say? For PEA, in typical PALS fashion, you start with compressions. Their compressions are in two-minute cycles along with epinephrine to be given every three to five minutes. As long as you're not in a shockable rhythm, you continue cycles of chest compressions and epinephrine with assisted ventilation. Hmm, that kind of sounds familiar. Because once you're past the ventilation and airway components of NRP, there too you are in rounds of chest compression and epinephrine every three to five minutes. The key is to recognize that the heart rate, despite what the ECG monitor might say, is zero. Babies with no heart rate, even in NRP, need chest compressions and epinephrine. Placing the PALS algorithm side by side with NRP, you can see that they are pretty compatible for PEA. I mean, there's a whole lot more pulse checking in PALS and there are different ratios of ventilation and compressions, sure, but they are both having you do cycles of chest compressions with epinephrine while continuing assisted ventilation. Then you look for the underlying causes of PEA. Those potential underlying causes are called the H's and T's in PALS. The H's are hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion, that means acidosis, but acidosis doesn't start with an H, so you have to get creative. Hypoglycemia, hypo or hyperkalemia, and hypothermia. The T's are tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, there they go again getting creative, toxins, and thrombosis, either pulmonary or coronary. I'm a little partial to the H's over the T's when it comes to likely underlying causes in a neonate, but each clinical situation is different, and you're going to have to think it through carefully each time. A special shout out to these H's and T's since they are probably the most likely underlying causes in neonates and already on the NRP algorithm. So what's a neonatal team to do with PEA? One, recognize it. You have a heart rate tracing and number on the ECG strip, but no pulse ox reading and no audible heartbeats. If you bothered to check, there would be no pulses either. Two, follow the algorithm. The heart rate is zero. We can't skip over the importance of ventilation in our neonates, so establish effective ventilation as quickly as possible. Ignore the number on the ECG monitor and recognize that with no pulse, that number is actually zero. Three, treat it. Establish your airway and ensure effective ventilation. Start compressions while getting IV access. Then give epinephrine every three to five minutes while minimizing interruptions in the chest compressions being given. Remember the H's and T's and treat any underlying causes not yet corrected. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like and share below and follow me here on YouTube or on Twitter. Leave a comment below if you have another idea for a topic I can cover that goes beyond advanced in neonatal resuscitation.